Well, hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be talking about giant blackheads. You know those massive ones that you see all over the internet, the ones that Dr. Sandra Lee is always extracting? Let me know in the comments if you are a fan of watching those extraction videos. I know they're really popular on the internet and many people find them incredibly gratifying to watch. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I am a board certified dermatologist. So what is up with these giant blackheads? Are they a real thing? Do people actually get these? and why do people get them? They are a real thing. Um, they're actually referred to as a dilated pore of Weiner. And why people get them, honestly, it's not entirely clear why they occur. They were originally described by, well, Weiner, that was the guy's name who described them. They happen most often on the head, the neck, or the back sometimes. They really can happen anywhere where you have hair because they, like the name implies, arise within a pore, basically an enlarged pore. And your pore is essentially a hair follicle. And the opening of the pore becomes enlarged and dilated, just as the name implies, and it starts to fill up with keratin, basically black material inside of it. That black material is a buildup of keratin, the protein that makes up your skin, your hair, your nails. Now, because that keratin buildup gets exposed to air, since the, the pore is enlarged and there's an opening to the surface, as it gets exposed to air, the contents, they oxidize, it turns black. That buildup of keratin material, it can, it can be extracted and it's black on the top, but the beneath, beneath the, the bottom part as it comes out, it's kind of white and kind of almost a cheesy consistency. And sometimes it has a bit of an odd odor to it. But essentially what a dilated pore of Weiner is, it's almost like a cyst. It has a lining. It's thought to occur as a reaction to maybe inflammation in the past. In fact, these are most common in people who have had a history in the past or maybe even currently of really inflammatory cystic acne. And because of that, their follicles are almost, you know, their pore lining is perhaps almost kind of, I don't know, a little traumatized and reacts in this abnormal fashion to create these massive enlarged pores. You know, they're more common in people who have a history of cystic acne. They're also really common in people who have a lot of background sun damage, probably because of damage to the pore lining from UV exposure. And this is just kind of a reaction that happens. Again, though, the reason people get these is not entirely clear. There are no symptoms associated with having one of these. Like they're not painful. It's not like red or inflamed or anything. So in contrast to a blackhead, otherwise known as an open comedone, this, if you biopsy it and look at it under the microscope, it's a cystic invagination with an opening to the skin surface, but it, it actually goes down pretty deep into the dermis and it's got a lining to it. So it's like a little sack almost. They're not dangerous. In fact, you know, if they don't bother you, you actually don't have to do anything to treat them. They can be left alone, but most people are bothered by them cosmetically. They want them removed. I discourage you from extracting them yourself. First of all, it can lead to, and often does lead to infection, scarring. And second of all, doing that yourself is futile because in a couple of days, that material is just gonna reaccumulate anyways. The only way to get rid of these is to have them excised. So just removing the gunk out of them, it, it's, it's just gonna reaccumulate. So doing it at home is not only futile, puts you at risk for infection and scarring, but you're generating a lot of inflammation around that follicle. And what can end up happening is that you can get some scar tissue that makes it actually harder to then later excise properly. So when you see a derm, yeah, I mean, more often than not, a lot of that material may be extruded through a with a comedone extractor before excising it. But the key is they need to be removed in order for them to go away. Just extracting the stuff, I mean, it, it's not, it's not in your best interest to keep doing that. But you know, they're mostly older adults that develop these, middle age to older adults. They're a lot more common in Caucasians and they're a lot more common in males. Possibly, you know, that might be related to cumulative UV exposure. Again, UV rays damage the follicle. Caucasians, you know, are more vulnerable to that kind of damage. And men typically, historically, have sustained more cumulative UV exposure over their lifetime than in comparison to women. So that, you know, maybe why they're more common in men. But people love squeezing these. I mean, you know, and, it, and I think it's challenging to resist the urge to squeeze them. Maybe your spouse, or significant other, or somebody in your family has one you wanna squeeze. Don't do it. <laughs> I mean, you can, you can definitely, you know, cause scarring and infection. And I know they sell those comedone extractors that you can buy um, like 
at the drugstore, but yeah, I caution against, I caution against using those things, period. So the history with these things, people will often have one for years and years and years, and they think it's a blackhead. They keep, you know, squeezing it, getting the stuff out, and then it just reaccumulates. Finally, they get fed up with it. They come to the dermatologist, it's like, oh, dilated pore whiner. It gets excised, removed, and then boom, it's gone. Now, there are a couple of other skin lesions that are kind of related to dilated pore whiner. There's one called a pilar sheath acanthoma. It always happens on like the upper lip for whatever reason. And then, of course, you have an epidermoid cyst, which is very closely related to a dilated pore whiner, but it's like, it's like a very large cyst. But the same thing, you know, if you, squeeze a, if you squeeze an epidermoid cyst, stuff will come out, but it just reaccumulates. And as you squeeze, you, you know, you can cause it to rupture. That leads to a lot of scar tissue formation and makes it more challenging to then later excise properly. So when you see these things on yourself or someone else, go see a derm to get them properly removed. Don't try and extract them yourself. Like I said, these need to be either excised or removed with something called a punch biopsy. If you're not familiar with that, with what that is, is. I'll put an image of what the tool looks like here, but basically we numb the area and we take this tool. It's kind of looks like a little circular cookie cutter almost and quite literally it punches down into the derma, all the way down to the dermis to remove that little cystic invagination in total and then a stitch is put in place to close the skin back together. The skin will heal together and that thing is gone. Other procedures that we do in dermatology really don't work particularly well for this, so they're kind of futile, things like laser, electrodesiccation, electrocautery, cryotherapy. It's not gonna work for this. It'll just come back and again, put you at risk for scarring. So, you know, we would remove them with an excision. They're pretty easy to remove and they're actually pretty gratifying to remove as well. Is there anything that you can buy in the store to get rid of these? No, short answer, no. Even over-the-counter acne treatments, they're not gonna get rid of that lining. That's what needs to be removed. Otherwise, that stuff's just gonna keep reaccumulating. Salicylic acid or alpha hydroxy acids, they may kind of soften the material inside. You may find that it kind of comes out a little bit more easy if you are trying to extract stuff, but it doesn't treat the, it doesn't treat them. Because again, it's not gonna it's not gonna address the lining. That's what needs to be removed. Retinoids aren't gonna do anything for this either. I mean, it's already formed. A retinoid can't, you know, undo this. You know, another tool that's really popular, sold on the internet that, you know, is not great, but people buy it in addition to the comedome extractor are those blackhead vacuum devices. Don't use that on this because it may get some of the material out, a little bit of it, but it's not gonna actually treat the problem and it will just recur. And if anything, like I said, you can cause scarring, a lot of inflammation, redness. Don't waste your time or money on those blackhead suction devices. A light mask is not gonna address this either. New face is not gonna address this. What other popular trendy device is there out there? Um, plasma pen is not gonna address this. None of those tools that you can buy on like Amazon or an Ulta or whatever are going to get to the root of this. Blackhead strips aren't. I mean, it's basically the cells are already committed to doing this and the only way to deal with it is to physically remove them with a procedure that cuts it out. Don't try and cut these out yourself. Definitely that would be very dangerous because you, especially the face, you'll definitely scar yourself. And there's a lot of, there are a lot of blood vessels around your face, the head and neck that if you cut into, you're gonna have a lot of bleeding. It'd be very dangerous. Are there certain products or ingredients that are poor clogging and could put you at risk for these? Not really. I mean, that is definitely reaching quite far given what we know about these. I mean, anything that could traumatize or occlude the pore lining perhaps may trigger these, but it's not like, you know, there's a list of products to avoid that will, you know, protect you from forming one of these. It, you know, we really just don't know enough about why these happen to say anything about that. And honestly, look at the people who develop these. It's not, you know, people who have an elaborate skincare routine. It's people who unfortunately had a history of cystic acne or have had a lot of sun damage in their lifetime. And both of those things cause a lot of trauma to the pore lining that could then later on trigger the formation of these dilated pores of whiner. That is the dilated pore of whiner. That is why you see these massive blackheads all over the internet. People enjoy watching the extractions um, and so they do really well on the internet. 
Uh, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's something that happens most likely in the background of sun damage or a history of cystic acne. They're not dangerous. So don't try and extract one yourself if you or a loved one or an enemy has one. Um, don't, don't try and extract them yourself. Like I said, it's futile and it can put you at risk for infection and scarring and make it harder to actually remove the dilated pore of whiner later on. All right, comment below though if you have ever seen one of these on yourself or somebody, you know, a loved one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.